Hi there folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's 3D World. I had a print failure and I'm trying to figure out why and I'm going to show you what I've discovered. Check this out. I printed both of these. I print this one on my CR10. I printed this one on my Ender 3 V2 that I just stuck a brand new board in and got it working, working again. Well, I printed a couple of items, small items. They seemed to look okay, but they still had some kind of funky thing going on. I was getting some little clumps here and there, but then look at this. I'm gonna see if I can get this. Look at this outside layer. It just, it delaminates on the outside. So that means it wasn't extruding. It was under extruding. I was pretty confident it was anyway, because I had everything looking like it was working pretty good. But then when I got this in my hand, it felt crinkly and wrinkly and I'm like, huh, what's going on? But there again, I realized I did touch something on this thing. I replaced the, the motherboard on this thing, which has the drive controllers on it. And that, in turn, could have changed something. So, with that being said, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna calibrate this, because I had to recalibrate this head over here anyway. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. Let's get you right in here close, I'm on. So when I put this new dual gear drive on here, it had a smaller gear on it anyway, and I had to recalibrate it at that time. Well, and I had it running, it was printing beautifully, it was doing an awesome job, and then all of a sudden, the driver on the board failed, and I spent a week and a half, and you've seen the video, uh, the previous video to this one most likely, is why did it die? Well, now, I had thought I had everything running really good, and it was, I thought. But then I've realized it's under extruding. And I'm gonna show you how I go about checking and measuring under extrusion or over extruding to see if that's your root cause for a problem on your 3D print quality. Okay, first things first is we need to get a measurement. We need to find out how much is our extruder extruding. And so what I've done here, I've taken my calipers, I've got it set to 120 millimeters. And what I've done, I'm trying to do this one-handed here, if I can. What I've done is gone up next to my extruder here. And keep in mind, I've only got just a little bit of filament just started into my Bowden tube. It's only until about right here. Now you can also do this by removing your Bowden tube and let the material come out the other side. You can measure what extrudes. I'm just gonna measure what goes in. So right now, I've got this right here set at Doom, doom, doom. We'll get it here. Well, this is going to be hard to see. But I do have a little black mark. I've got this up against the where it goes in to the drive gears. I've got this measured. There's a little black mark right next to my thumb there. Right there. That is 120 millimeters. So once you've got your 120 millimeter mark, let's see if you can see it there now. Yeah, 120, milli 120 millimeters. What you're going to do, now what I do, you can either dial it up on he over here, but what I'm going to do is my octoprint. Let's just go over here. All right, now that we've got the, uh, I've got my octoprint open. This is what's controlling. I'm getting, you know, I can see my temperature. You guys watch my other videos how to hook up octoprint through a Raspberry Pi. This is what I'm doing it through here. So what I'm doing is I've dialed up, I'm gonna have an extrude measurement. This is normally set at five. Now this is what you normally see. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it set at 100, oops, 100 millimeters. I wanna extrude 100 millimeters. And I'm gonna hit extrude. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit extrude right here. And you'll go over here and watch it extrude. And as you can see, it's hard to see but it's feeding in and as you can see it's it's hard to see but it's feeding in there's a little black mark right black marks actually right here right in the shiny spot so we're going to extrude and once it gets done extruding 100 millimeters it's going to stop now it thinks it did 100 millimeters it did not so what i'm going to do is i'll take my caliper and you can do this with a nice scale a ruler as well is we're going to go up in here and we're going to measure what it did do and what I come up with is 
So I went, I moved it 100 millimeters, and this uh, had it set out 120. It moved 51.7, uh, left me with 51.75 measurement after the fact. Now I'm going to go into this calculation screen, and I'll show you how to calculate what you need to do. All right, I want to direct you to a video here. This is uh, Teaching Tech. This gentleman here does a lot of really good things with 3D printers. Uh, you can, there'll be a link down below to get to, uh, I'll leave a link to this video so you can watch him. I highly recommend him. And I also wanted to show you this right here, Teaching Tech GitHub IO forward slash blah, blah, blah. Um, this will actually take you to a website I'm going to show you next. So this is Teaching Tech. So this is a frame check, PID. This is all the teaching tech uh, stuff you can do to calibrate your printer. We're going to do extruder E-steps calibration. Now what we have here, as you can see here, is going to go through step by step and show you exactly how to do it. Kind of showing you what I was just doing, but he's using a scale here. He's marking his filament. He's going to show what was left. And here's where the cool part comes in. Uh, there's an area in here, so uh, there's a command you want to type in, and I'm going to show you that command. So, there's, uh, let's see, it's right here, the M92. It will report the current parameters. So, what I'm going to do is go into my Ender 3 V2. Now, we're underneath, you got temperature control, G code viewer, and terminal. And here's where you can type stuff into your terminal. This thing's auto scrolling commands. It's just constantly going and going and going. I'm going to show you what to watch for. So as he said here, whoops, as he said here, we're going to type in an M92 and hit enter. And we're going to watch what pops up. And you'll see something like M92, XYZ, and it says E93. That's what you're looking for right here what the E is going to represent. So it's sending in 92. So that's what we're going to do right here. This little step is what you're going to see me perform. So I'm going to type in here, M92. Enter. Boom. See, it popped out a 93. So it's back to the extruder. Is set at, it defaulted back to 93. I had another number in there originally. So now we know what it is. Cool part is you go back into this teaching tech, and you can type in... Uh, See, I had a 116. So previous recorded by M82 was a 93. And then measurement between the extruder entry and the mark on the filament. I had 51.75. 51.75. And then we're going to hit calculate. Now, it says there was a 51 of, of basically it was exactly what I've said, 51.75 mil, uh, millimeters of filament remain, remaining, which means you extruded 68.25. Uh, a filament. Your new E step should be 136.26. Enter the following into the terminal. So right there, M92 136, and then followed by an M500. So now we're going to go Control C. I'm going to copy that right there. We're going to go back over here. I'm going to Control V that, hit Enter, and then I'm going to also type in an M500 and hit Enter. And that, what that does is that echoed to the EEPROM. So now if I do a G92 or an M92, not G92, M92, and hit Enter, you're going to see a different number. Now it's reporting a 136.26, which is what I put in there. Now that I've done that, I'll go back to my machine. This is talking to my machine. This is telling my machine what to do. So now I'm going to go back and set my machine up again for 120 millimeters. Then I'm going to do an extrude again, and it will then... See if I have, if all is right, I'll have exactly 20 millimeters left sticking out uh, from on my mark, from that the extruder head to the mark. And that way I know that the extruder is uh, putting out exactly what it's expecting to put out. So as you can see, uh, it said 93, it needed 136. You can actually see how much it was under extruding. So that's why my print was coming out like poop. All right, let's go back to the machine now that we've got that put in there and let's do another extrude like I said I still got 100 here let's go back and reset the machine so it's ready to extrude 100 millimeters once again all right we've hit it again we've got it we had it set at 120 millimeter I'm expecting this to come out and be about 20 millimeters from this face this little black mark here 
I know it's really hard to see. I can already see that it went past where it did before. Boom. It stopped moving. Now I want to take a measurement here and see where we ended up. just like that we ended up with 20.15 I'm gonna call that close enough that should work that is much better than it was before now it's gonna extrude the right amount every time now now that I have that extruder dialed into where I think it needs to be next thing I want to do is pull up my printer and we're gonna do the Ender 3 v2 and then I want to import a test cube so I'm gonna open a file here and I'm going to do a test cube on ABS. So I haven't done a lot of work with ABS yet. Um, I think my test cube is down here, yeah, XYZ test cube. And there it is. It's a nice short print. It'll also tell me if my layers are looking good. Now, instead of it looking all gappy and not looking really good, um, but I also want to pick, uh, let's just go with a. A generic ABS for now and we'll keep all this um, so I want to go in here and I want to do it's gonna be a printing temperature to I'm gonna try 230 to start with and I'm gonna do a bed temperature of 100 let's see how that does with this new bed that I've got I'm gonna leave the retract the build wall speeds uh, all the same. Uh, we don't need any support. We can unclick that. I'm gonna put a brim on it, um, just because that gives me a little extra holding power. And I can try. I'm gonna try it with the brim, and then I'll try it without a brim. But for this video, I'm gonna do it with the brim, and we're gonna take a look at some things. I'm gonna slice it. I'm gonna take five grams. I'm gonna save it to the file. And this is going to be a CE. I'm going to call this one a, an ABS uh, XYZ calibration cube. And we're going to save that to my machine, my machine. Then we're going to go back to the uh, see here. I'm going to upload it. ABS, right there it is. Let's see, I got a calibration cube in here, but this one is the ABS calibration cube. So let's go ahead and hit print on that, and let's see how the machine does. So you can see now it's uh, I had the temperature already up there at 2:30 when I was doing this extruding. I was I was actually uh, purging the nozzle out. Uh, now you can see my bed temperature is going to come up right here to 100 degrees C uh, and then it's going to kick into the nozzle and it should take off once this thing hits 100 degrees C and we'll go from there let's see how she prints we'll be back right after it's done printing hopefully it sticks to the bed that's that's the biggest issue I've had with ABS so far is sticking to the bed I haven't built anything ABS big enough to start seeing delaminations and and cracking and stuff like that that people are experiencing on ABS uh, without an enclosure without an enclosure being around their printer so we're going to give it a whirl let's see how this piece turns out and then i might do some other test pieces with this abs brand new roll of abs from uh what have i got here i think this is uh, uh what brand is it oh darn, darn blank Yeah, this is from Hatchbox. This is the brand I'm using right now. So we're going to see how that works. I had really good luck with Hatchbox um, so far. Uh, seems to be a really, real consistent product. Matter Hackers is another one I've been using. There again, I'm not sponsored by either one of these folks. Uh, but I want you guys to have as much success as you can in your 3D printing world. We'll be right back when it's done printing. And we'll look over the part and see what we have.
calibration was a success. So I printed the little XYZ block out of ABS nonetheless. And then I printed uh, a new designed, uh, what I call it's a bracket to hold a boat cover. I printed it at 50% size because I didn't want to get halfway through and have it fail and waste a lot of filament. But printed off flawlessly, ABS. Now I'm doing one on here right now that's full size ABS. I tell you what, this plate I've got on here seems to hold on like a vise, which is 50% of the battle with ABS is getting it to stick to the base plate. The other would be to make sure there's no drafts in the room. Uh, that's why you see a lot of people run these uh, ABS in enclosures because as they print bigger and taller stuff, it starts to shrink and crack and do other types of funny things. Uh, right now I'm running ABS with a uh, 230 degree nozzle temp and I'm running the 100 uh, degree bed temp. So far so good. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video folks. I hope this was helpful. You guys get out there and have some fun. Design, create, inspire, print. This is Michael and I'm out.